we are going to start with the presentation called Active Reading. It's in charge of Professor Herbert Alfonso Mendieta from the Languages Institute. A short profile, Professor Herbert has a Master in Education from Universidad Santo Tomás and his Bachelor of Arts is his from Universidad Pedagogica Nacional. Also, he is an English as a second language teacher, researcher, and a staff member of the Languages Institute, Fray Bernardo de Lugo. He, also, he is also part of the USA Learning Research Group. Uh, he is experienced in English as a second language curriculum and evaluation design, and nowadays he is working in quality and accreditation processes at the Languages Institute Fray Bernardo de Lugo. Please welcome him to the stage. There is no internet connection? Oh my goodness. 
Okay, well, don't worry, we can start the activity just with those eight students. Okay, so, the first thing I want you to do is just to select the appropriate question according to your own experience. We have a question in here, and it is, do you consider reading important? And you have four possibilities, no answer, yes, not sure, or no, right? Select your answer, that's all you have to do. It's just uh, a click in your mobile phone, in your device. Okay, we have 11 participants, very good. Okay, excellent. And most of you, almost the 72% of the audience here, consider that reading is definitely a very important process. That's very interesting, there are no different answers. 83%, the percentages is still going up. 83% of the audience consider that reading is important. And here we have Brian, Flora, Alejandra, Luisa, Sergio, Daniel, Angie. Okay, keep that information in mind. Okay, there is another question that I want you to try to answer. It's not really difficult. And we have, do you read because, do you read because, do you need it? Because it's mandatory, because you have to write about what you read, because you are asked by the teacher, or because you like it. So there are five possibilities. You read because you like it, because you find it interesting, you find it funny, you want to read, you want to learn vocabulary, learn the structures, or you learn because it is a, a requirement in your classes, because your teachers tell you to do so. So what is the purpose of reading? We have some answers. We have some answers. Luisa, we want you to answer. Daniel, Brian. I need your answer too. Okay, I think that's it. And we have 57% of the audience, that's uh, almost half of the audience here, and they said, I read because I like it, teacher. I love reading, so nobody has to tell me to read. I do it on my own. I enjoy the process of reading. We also have maybe 13% of the audience here who say, teacher, I just read because I have to. My teachers tell me to read, and I have to write reports about what I read. I have to deliver essays. I have to deliver summaries of what I do. So that is the opinion of 13% of the audience. Uh, only 6% uh, of the audience here read because they need it. I say, teacher, I have to read because I need it. My teachers tell me to do so, so I do it. Because they are asked to also read 6.7%. Because it's mandatory. Okay, very good. Uh, fortunately, uh, nobody reads because it's mandatory. You read because you like it, you read because you love it, because you have to do something with what you read. And this is very important. This is part of active reading that is also um, the topic of today's session, right? Uh, there is a final question I want you to answer. Do you have a reading strategy? And the options are very clear. No answer. No or yes? This is the last question of, uh, for this session. And you just need to click in the correct option. In your own experience. Do you have a reading strategy? Okay, we have 46% of the audience say yes. 26% of the audience say no. So let's wait for five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so 
60% of the audience say, yes, teacher, I have a strategy. So, let me say, Brian, who's Brian? I know who Brian is. Brian, do you have a strategy to read? What is your strategy? Excuse me. If you want to use the microphone to amplify your voice. Uh, probably in my daily life, uh, I consider that for me the most difficult is uh, the specific readings more than casual reading. So I try to mix these two types of text. Uh, for example, the engineering uh, textbooks with some short novel or also a comic. Interesting answer, very good. So, Flor, who's Flor? Yeah, you're Flor. Oh, it's over there. So, do you have a strategy? What's your strategy? Well, okay, so, in Spanish, if you want. Okay, you can do that. Okay, so, Chichua is to find uh, unknown vocabulary. Any other strategy? No, underline, just looking large, try to classify. Okay, very good. Uh, the last answer, Alejandra. Who's Alejandra? Alejandra? Okay. Alejandra, do you have a strategy for reading? Um, yes, also my strategy is um, underline some keywords, vocabulary, and authors. Okay. Very good, okay. That's very interesting. But as far as I can see, 60% of the audience say, yes, teacher, have a strategy. And some other strategies that you can use along in your reading process is underline, obviously, a non-vocabulary. You can also classify vocabulary, for example, into different categories. What is noun, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, so that you can clarify the functions and the grammar functions of the ideas, the sentences that you are reading. That's a very good strategy. Another one, if you are, if you are taking notes, uh, you need to identify topic sentences, main ideas, supporting ideas. You can also identify conclusions. And that is part of active reading. And this is also important while you are reading to have a highlighter because you can underline, you can take notes, you can write on your uh, book, on your copies, on what you have, right, in order to clarify some information. So thank you very much for this participation in this survey. Now I'm moving a little bit deeper in this presentation. While I was trying to find the material for this presentation, I just found out this interesting cartoon by Charles Schultz, the creator of um, Charlie Brown. And in here we have Sally, one of uh, his favorite characters. And she says, just to finish, is active reading really important? If I am asked about it, I will say yes. If I said no, I would get a low score. And I found it interesting because that is the idea many people have about reading. And they say, reading is just a process to be evaluated. And they read just because they need a score, because they need a good evaluation, because they need a good essay, they need a good summary, a good report. But there is something further, there is something beyond just getting a score, just getting a high uh, grade in your classes. Reading process involves uh, something really important that I want to show you. The first thing that active reading involves are the human senses. Do you remember the human senses? How many of them are they? One, two, three, four, human senses. What are the human senses? Five? Okay, do you remember them? Human senses. Excuse me? Hearing, okay, it's one of them. Hearing, sight. Yes, very good, it's the second. Touch, the third. Smell. Smell, and finally, one more. Is there? 
taste. Very good. So, active breathing include the human senses. And I got a picture here to illustrate what I'm talking about. The first one, the, the orange circle. So, it refers to touch. And as you already know, for example, blind people, if they want to read, when they face a reading, they need their fingers and they move the fingers along the pages just to feel the different dots. And they can identify words and get a meaning from what they read. So it is definitely sure that when we read, we include touch. Sight. It's also included in uh, this reading process because obviously you need to see the phonemes, you need to see graphemes, you need to see words, you need to see the phrases in order to be able to read and get a meaning out of what you are reading. Okay, and here what do we have? What do we have in here? What is the green one? The taste. Okay, obviously you, you don't eat the copies, the pages, the books, but it is it's a, an important sense because you need to communicate what you are reading. Sometimes you read for yourself, sometimes you read on your own, because it is your hobby, because you like to do it, but most of the times you read because you have to give your own opinion about what you are reading. You need to communicate uh, your own ideas about what you are reading. So, Senses including the process of reading. First, touch, sight, taste, or communication. Then we have hearing. As I was telling you before, sometimes you read for yourself. But in the different cases, you have to listen other people read. Right? Sometimes it's not only uh, the process you can do on your own, but it's the process that you listen to what people are doing. And smell, well, it depends on the environment you are in. Every place has a particular smell, right? So it also affects the process of reading. Probably here in a warm space, probably here while you are seated, you are com comfortable over there, and you start the reading process, you might feel sleepy. But if we go out just to the square here, uh, you may also feel uh, in a different attitude towards reading. Okay, that is the first aspect of active reading, including the senses, but we also include cognition. Reading is a mental process. And what is the first aspect to consider? Perception, right? When you woke up this morning, probably you realized that it was a cold day, that it was uh, a cloudy day, and you said, oh, so today is going to be a really cold day, so I need a comfortable sweater, I need a warm jacket, I need a scarf, my clothes, because you have a perception of what the day was going to be. Or probably you thought, now the day is, is going to be hot, the sun is starting to, to rise at the horizon. And you said, just with a t-shirt, it's okay. I, I feel comfortable just wearing a t-shirt. Probably I pack my sunglasses because my perception, my perception of the day helped me to make some decisions. And it's the same when reading. The same process. You decide what you have to read, of what you are going to read. It's interesting, it's boring, you like it, you don't like it. You also think on the purpose of reading. I read because I have to write. I read because I have to give a report. So, perception is the first aspect of active reading. Who I do I have to read? The second is the attention. Right? Because you need to be focused in what you read. Focus to identify the main ideas. Focus to get on details. That is how you read it. You're in the process of active reading when you are able to identify supporting ideas, main ideas, second ideas, conclusions. That is the process of attention. It also includes the memory. The memory. 
I remember when I was a child, I was trying to memorize the multiplication tables. I think all of you had to go along that process too. And I asked my father, hey father, do I really have to memorize the multiplication tables? And he said, obviously, you will need them all your life. And I still remember how much is 5 times 5. How much is it? Oh my goodness. 25. Peter, you did the process correctly. But how much is 7.6? 7 times 6. 7 times 6. 5, 4, 3, 2, 42. Oh, okay, very good. So, you still remember, right? When did you try to memorize the multiplication tables? Yesterday? No, maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I did it 25 years ago. And I still remember how much is 9 times 9. 81. 81. We have a super flash mind here. Okay, very good. So, reading includes memory. Right? For example, if you read because you want to learn new vocabulary, you need, obviously, to memorize. You have to go over the reading once, twice, three times, just in order to memorize the vocabulary, just to get the, 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 uh, the main idea of what you are reading. As I told you, another important process in active reading is language or the ability to communicate. Right? I, uh, I think you are here because uh, you want to be involved in these kind of processes, but also because after this uh, talk, you have to write a report. Right? You are assigned a task in which uh, you have to give a reason of what I spoke in here. So, you need to communicate. Active reading is also communicate. And uh, finally, thinking. Active reading is a process in which you include uh, a change of your points of view. Or also you reinforce your points of view. You establish a new point of view. About what? About what you are reading. Hmm? Uh, I can also say that active reading includes also a process of critical thinking. Because you read to establish, understand and create logical connections. And we have here R and R. What is the connection you need to establish? You connect the reality and what you are reading. Right? Remember that you read with a purpose. You read with a specific plan. For example, um, two days ago there was a very important news at the newspaper. Who knows who is Carlos Queiroz? Nobody? Carlos Queiroz. Carlos Queiroz. Is he a businessman? Is he an entrepreneur? Is he a politician? The Colombian coach. Yeah, the Colombian soccer team coach. And probably you say, well, that's not important to me. Some of you may think that is not important. Some of you will think the opposite. But there is something that affects you, right? If you like soccer, probably. You say, well, probably he will be a good coach for our national soccer team. Probably he will lead our soccer team to become a champion at the American Cup in two, three months. And that news is affecting your point of view about soccer about our soccer team, about players. Uh, if you are reading about the, the head, do you know what, what that is? The head? G-E-P, J-E-P, sorry, J-E-P. What is J-E-P? So for, that's a question for very Colombian people. <laughs> Okay, yes, very good. In English is perfect. Okay. And you are reading about that, right? And you say, well, that's... I, I don't have anything to do with that. I'm not a politician. I'm not a governor. I'm not the Colombian president. 
I'm not in the Congress. I'm not in the Senate. Ah, oh, but you are at the university. Ah, oh, but you are Colombian. So that news also affects your point of view about your own reality. And that is what we live for. To find my own perspective of life in what I read, no matter what you are reading. If you are reading poetry, if you are reading cartoons, if you are reading a book, if you are reading just a, for a homework, you always read because the purpose is to set a point of view according to what you read and your own reality. It's also important because when you read, you identify, you construct, and you evaluate arguments. And that's very important. Sometimes as a teacher, I hear students say, teacher, that's what I think, and that's it. Okay, that's right. You think what you think, and that's right. But did you try to test what you are reading, uh, what, what you are thinking? with authors, with literature, with other and different points of view, right? So we read and we start to, uh, we start a process of active reading just to identify, construct and evaluate my own arguments, right? So probably you will say, Carlos Queiroz, no, definitely, that, that is going to be the same. The Colombian soccer team is going to, uh, He's going to do the best, he's going to be the best team ever, but anyway, they're going to fail, they're not going to score any goals. Probably, but, and you think, that's my opinion, and that's what I think, but did you try to test it? Did you test it? Did you go along different articles, different um, writing pieces? Did you go along different authors just to check if what you think is correct or not? Do you read actively? to evaluate your arguments, to solve problems. And I have a very important saying. When I don't know how to do something, what I do is just to go where I can find the answers. Where I find answers in the books? Reading, I find answers reading. So, you can also uh, use active reading to solve problems systematically. To identify the relevance and important concepts or to reflect on the justifications on one's beliefs and values. Remember that you may think whatever you want to think, but you also have to consider that what you think must be uh, in agreement with your environment, right? And there is a, a very important point of view that I want to share with all of you. Because I was thinking in this process of reading, how can I improve reading my students? How can I improve reading in my English classes? How can I introduce my students into critical thinking? And I just started a research project about this. And I just found out three paradigms. How to motivate students to foster, to foster speaking, reading, and writing accurately. How to promote production in English in my classes. And finally, how to articulate the play and didactics in my classes. And the answer is the following. I have a context. The context is university, University at Santo Tomas. The context is, uh, so my classes, my courses, my students, obviously. And I want them to become the focus of this project. I didn't want to become just like the most important person in the project. Just giving instructions, telling the students what to do, just giving them orders, do this, do that. I just wanted the students to be the focus of this process. I will just give them a first and initial instruction and they will continue working on that. A second moment, I just wanted this activity to be profitable for my students. Not only to fulfill papers, not only to deliver essays, but that they could get not only information, but learn vocabulary, that they were able to express their own ideas, to communicate what they were writing. I also wanted this activity to be enjoyable. 
that the students could say, well, teacher, I like this activity. Mm, something else. I want the students could be able to include feelings, emotions, and that is also important because sometimes students have stories to tell, different stories to tell, but they are not allowed to tell them in class. So along this process, they were able to do it. How introducing the senses, human senses. Okay, so please, I'm just about to finish, so please, I suggest you to stay, don't go. Otherwise, oh, someone is leaving over there, please remember to stay. Another aspect, so I was just thinking to do the same but in a different way, help my students to think critically, to learn vocabulary, to learn grammar, and be able to communicate. How? Through a process of storytelling, or a process of uh, cartoon design. And also there is some important theory that is able to support this research. And first of all, we have Chris and Lewin here. Images have become a communication system more and much relevant these days than what it was some years ago. Why? Due to it generates a significant change in the way we uh, in the way texts are faced. So in, in this part I have an activity that I want you to help me. And it is just in here. Okay, you can see different icons, right? But all of them have a hidden message. What is the hidden message? They all refer to movies. Those uh, icons that you can see in the screen refer to movies. Move title, titles of different movies. So I want you to help me to identify the movies they represent. For example, number seven is very easy. What is number seven? P. Life of P. Life of P, very good. Can you identify any other movie? Excuse me? Sex and the City. It's number one, yes, very good. Brian? Number nine. Number nine? What is number nine? Very hard work. What else can you identify in there? Number two, what is number two? Silence of the Lamb, yes. But in Spanish, the name is completely different. Number two is uh, Silencio de los Inocentes. But in English is the silence of the land. Fourteen. What is fourteen? The life of Benjamin. Excuse me, Benjamin Button. Okay, but number three is very easy, super easy. Number three. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Uh, let's say number twelve. Number twelve. Okay. The Planet of the Apes. Excellent. The Planet of the Apes. A P E S. Okay. And in here, what do we have? Transformers. Could be, but uh, that is not the answer. You can see this is a teenager, a doctor, a scientist. That's a scientist. This is the uh, very famous car. Back to the future. Yes, that's it. Uh, oh, this one is very easy. Forest Gump. So, with this exercise, I wanted you to realize how important images are in the process of reading, right? And the relations we establish just by looking at the images. There is no text. There is no text on uh, these images, but you can identify the message. So, it is always important in active reading to create associations. Remember, the first association, reality and what I read. The second uh, relation I need to establish is the image with what I am um, reading. And there is another example, and I want you to help me. Okay, okay. So these pictures were taken from El Tiempo. The first one is from March, two weeks ago, or a week ago. And the second one was taken the last week of February. Okay, it's February. So let's uh, 
try to describe the first picture. What do you see in the first picture? What do you see? And what is the message? A politician? A doctor? Is a picture uh, based on the army forces? Excuse me? Okay. Okay, yes, very good. The problem that has the Federation Colombian Athlete. But is there any message in any writing? Any idea, any sentence, any paragraphs? No. But you can establish connections, the image and the meaning. Right? And what is the problem? What is the problem? Harassment. Yes, sexual harassment. Okay, it's a very difficult problem. Okay, so let's describe the second picture. What can you see there? What or who can you see there? Maduro. Maduro, okay. We have in the center Maduro. Uh, USA. USA. We have an eagle. We have a bird. Chavez. Chavez? What is Chavez in the picture? The canary, the bird. How do you know? There are no texts in, in the cartoon. There are no phrases. There are no words. So how do you know he is Chavez? Because you establish connections, right? And you get the message of the cartoon just by establishing different connections. Okay, obviously this is Charles, but more than that, he's the representation of communism, socialism, and those kinds of reasons, right? And he says, Quédate, stay there, stay where you are. And the opposite side we have? United States. Mr. Trump, right? With the capitalism, right? And he says, go away, go away. And what is Maduro's position? Confusion, he doesn't know what to do, right? So, uh, you can see that there is a, an evident connection between images and the reality. There are no texts, more just uh, a few words. We can count one, two, three words, but you get a complete message just by making or establishing relations with the reality. Mm. Okay, so, oops. No, no, just. But I'm about to, don't worry. I'm just going to the conclusions. And after this research process, I found out that active reading has a didactic function. And these activities contribute to increase comprehension and to promote critical thinking. Active reading provides a new reading experience because it is not just going along pages and pages and pages, right? Just because in, with this kind of processes you start to establish connections, relations. What is my reality and what is what I'm reading and how can I connect them? Uh, students establish more specific and clear relations in aspects such as structure and content. And they also relate their reality with their context. This is one of the most important aspects in active reading. Associations with values and concepts of life. Definitely when you read, you change your point of view. Um, students have the opportunity to explore new learning techniques. Students have to solve problems and to generate arguments to support their attitudes and behavior. So this is the end of the presentation. So I, I appreciate you stay here and pay attention. If you have questions, obviously, you can ask. If you need to clarify any doubt, you can ask. Can you show the conclusions again? Oh, obviously. A very easy question. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments, any other questions, something that you would like to add? You have a question? Okay.
what, what do you think well, when I talking about a controversial issue it's easier to, to learn or to do the English okay very interesting question so I would try to express that question in different words how controversial topics are able to facilitate my process of learning a second language okay very good uh, I consider that these kind of topics, for example, the harassment problem at the national soccer team or the process Venezuela is facing currently these days help to improve the language because it's something that affects our reality. No matter if I am Colombian, Venezuela is over there and I don't care about Venezuelans, but they are coming to my country. Their country, our country is becoming their homeland. So I need to set my position and I need to establish new ideas about that. Am I affected? You may think yes, you may think no, but you need to support what you think. If you say yes, you need to have your own opinion about it and you need to argument your position. But if you say no, it is the same. You need to clarify your ideas you need to have your own arguments. You have to test your arguments. Institución de Educación it's not Superior, sujeta a inspección y vigilancia por el Ministerio de Educación Nacional. Hours, you need to check if what you are thinking is right or not. And along this process, as a, an everyday life issue, you need to speak about it. So you need to learn the vocabulary. You need to reinforce grammar structures to be able to communicate your idea. And communication is part of active reading. Sometimes you read on your own, but other times you need to read to communicate ideas, to communicate what you think. No matter if you transmit ideas orally or if you transmit your ideas on a written paper. So definitely covering topics help us to uh, speak, motivate our speaking. You have something to say, right? Is there another question? Is there another comment, no matter if uh, your questions are in Spanish? That's it. Okay, thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much for being here. And I expect you continue enjoying these kind of sessions. Thank you very much. de Educación Superior, sujeta a inspección y vigilancia por el Ministerio de Educación Nacional.